Before we start the challenge, first let's go over the rules and explanation on some things. Every heist must be done solo. This means other players are not allowed to join the lobby. Team AI is allowed. Downs and kills are completely irrelevant. The only thing that matters is finishing the heist fast enough. There are no build restrictions. We can use everything. It's up to us whether we want to approach the heist stealth or loud. Both are allowed. Ending of every heist has to be displayed as a proof that it was not cheated with stuff like instant win. And obviously, we have to get the death sentence one down mask within 24 hours, otherwise we lose. That's it for the rules. Now let's talk about the guest for the video, Jam, previously known as Flick. We will not be playing together, but we split the heists between each other. I would have gone insane doing everything myself, especially since I no longer have as much fun playing Payday compared to 2020. So he helped me with some of the heists and spent a lot of the time uploading them, so big kudos to him. So how does the time counter work? We obviously did not spend 24 hours playing through everything in one go, so the final completion time will simply be the summary of how long every heist took. And one more thing, we are not speedrunners. The goal was to finish the heists fast, but at the same time, we did not practice anything and just played with the strats that worked for us. Every heist surely could have been completed faster, but because of how we played, some people might have an easier time copying what we did. With that out of the way, let's start. The first heist goes to Joe, and he chose to self it. Getting the keycard was the priority. This allowed for an easy security room entrance, and this is where the first kill took place in order to get rid of the cameras. After that, he entered the place from the roof and began to steal the paintings. During the second minute, he was spotted by two guards and had no choice but to kill them, which resulted in a slight time loss, and soon after, the third guard decided to interrupt as well. The second heist goes to me, and it's Bank Heist Cash. There's no real strategy required. I get the drill, place it, and pretty much AFK. I decided to go with Kickstarter. Unfortunately, it did not want to cooperate with me. And right after that, I was greeted by the infamous Trinity consisting of medic dozers because the game decided there should be no half measures during this challenge. After getting rid of them, the drill was finished, so all I needed was a bit of money. The van RNG wasn't the best, but it wasn't bad either. I rushed forward without caring about the cops and finished the heist. Oh look, what an original heist we got now. It's so cool we don't have to repeat the same stuff. Another heist and Kickstarter still does not like me. The AI placed themselves pretty well, so I just told them to wait and because of how OP they are, I can safely AFK. Just look at it, I did not have to do anything until the drill was done. The first problem started here because I am most likely the worst sword user in the entire player base. Thank god it did not take me too long to get the money bundle. Unfortunately this time the RNG was not by my side and I had the worst van placement, but that did not stop me. I did the same thing, rushing to the van while ignoring most cops and there weren't any issues with finishing the heist.
Hey, Kickstarter finally worked. Also, I have no idea what happened to the dozer. Once again, the worst RNG, and this time the issue is slightly bigger, because gold is heavier to carry than money. Normally, you'd want to open the locked door instead of forcing the way through the main entrance, but we have no time to waste. Sadly, the taser was not kind enough, and I got destroyed on my way to the van. My only choice was to wait for the bots to help me, so I lost a few seconds there. Why the fuck are there 4 bank heists? Seriously. I totally was not sick of the heist and totally did not decide to watch anything on my second monitor while letting the bots do the job until I died. I ended up getting bank heist gold for the second time which is the worst one because as I said, carrying gold makes you slower. But this time the van RNG was decent. I lost my only down so I decided to wait a few seconds for my pocket ECM to recharge to make sure I don't get destroyed. We're back to Joe again, and now it's time for a quick car shop. He decided to be mean and killed everyone. Luckily, finding the right PC was very quick. After planting the C4, he used the ECM and quickly yeeted into the car. Before leaving, he had to kill one more sieve and then the driving was almost flawless. Now it's time for me to become Heisenberg. The RNG I got for cooking was the upper floor, but it doesn't really have an impact on anything. There was also nothing special going on, so I'm only showing the ending which ended up being pretty decent, because I got the better van RNG. Once again, Joe decided to stealth, simply starting off by getting rid of the camera boy and then slaughtering sieves, cops and the card manager. After using the card, he continued to kill everyone to then grab all the jewellery and finish the heist. Pretty poor RNG when it comes to drill cover, but it's not the end of the world. The beginning is just half waiting, half AFKing for the cage parts to drop. The parts are there so I just rush without caring about the cops too much.
While going back, the cops caught up and swarmed the area pretty hard with some dozers, so I decided to wait a few seconds because both of my pocket ECMs were recharging. Since I'm very professional, I failed to assemble the cage as fast as I wanted by missing my throws. After that, it's just going back to the drill and waiting for the vault to open. Surprisingly, this time my sawing skills didn't get in my way. However, not only did I die twice while trying to finish the objective, but also missed throws a few more times. I was at my last down, so I rushed the medic bag given to me by our assets. For some reason, one of the bots decided life is not worth it anymore, but it wasn't a huge deal. I got rid of the cops around the objective since there was a turret and unfortunately still ended up taking health damage, but managed to survive. Now I just had to navigate through the sewers and just like that we have another heist done. For the first time, I decided to stealth as well because despite being the worst stealth player to exist, even I can do this heist. After getting rid of everyone, I started stealing the jewellery around and it was going smooth. Until I realised something. Right, I wasted a lot of time by not drilling which is required in order to complete the heist. I completely forgot about it so I ended up taking over 7 minutes. Both days of this heist were rather smooth. Hacker is very strong overall and way too strong with the dodge boost from bots. I rushed to Mr. Pink without caring much about anything and finished the objective without taking health damage a single time. This objective is much worse when because there are multiple spots to saw through and it's always random. I was unfortunately pretty unlucky in this case because the diamonds happened to have been in the third garage out of four. The escape objective is up so I repeat what I did when going to Mr. Pink and finish the heist relatively fast despite not having the greatest diamond RNG. As we already know, dodge this high is pretty much god mode, so I rushed for liquid nitrogen carelessly. Then after using one, I repeated the same steps. The only difference is that this time the cops found a way to outplay me. Since I was playing without sound, I couldn't hear cloakers and got wrecked. But in the end, it didn't change much other than me losing a bit of time. 
Looting the vault was rather smooth. I let bots carry some of the bags and took care of the rest myself. Naturally, with my throwing skills, I missed once. After securing everything, I yeeted to escape fast and finish the heist either without taking health damage a single time or taking a little bit of damage. Max Dodge Hacker is pure insanity. other than time consuming objectives in the meantime. I am pretty sure my bag carrying route was very suboptimal and made me lose way too much time as well. I have no idea how the Among Us venting system works on this heist, so I had no choice but to carry everything on my own. Also I almost ended up failing the heist because Cloakers decided to absolutely destroy the bots at the end and they did their job very well because Cloakers counter team AI more than anything else. Transport's in a nutshell, straightforward and boring. It's all about placing the drills, fixing them, opening and stealing loot for about 10 minutes. The exact same thing as Crossroads. The exact same thing as Crossroads and Downtown. Similar to previous transports, but this one is even dumber. Without any hesitation, Joe decided to stealth this one, and I cannot blame him because when it comes to loud, especially solo, it's hard to describe how bad this heist is. On top of that, there's not much to say. Having to carry 20 bags on your own should help you understand there's nothing worth showing here. Oh look, another one of those. Great. Thank god it's the last one. Finally, a decent heist. As long as the valve isn't far away from the house, this heist is very easy. Also, I forgot to disable my MSI afterburner statistics. Oops. I got the best hose, so this objective was basically given away to me for free. After that, it's just AFKing, waiting for the drill to finish. The water flowed very smoothly. Nothing was ever interrupted. Eleven minutes on counterfeit isn't the worst. Diamond heist is generally fast. 
but I forgot the locations of the security system boxes and because of it I lost some time at the start. At least I remember where the CFO spawns, so this objective was pretty fast because he only stopped twice for a brief period of time. The final objective might seem slightly difficult, but it wasn't. The first thing I did was giving 3 bags to the bots and taking the 4th one myself, and after getting rid of them, I repeated the exact same steps. Now it was just waiting for the helicopter at the roof. The start was pretty bad, the bank manager happened to have been in the last spot I checked, and so I wasted at least half a minute of time overall. Drill itself was whatever, I placed 3 of my bots near it and then just half afk'd behind. Dropping off the loot wasn't as good as it could have been because the dozers didn't want to give up. However, the bots tanked everything with their broken HP, so I didn't bother with killing them. Green Bridge was also done without too many problems. Start by placing the drills everywhere and then hope the prisoner is in the closest one to the scaffolding. Luckily, that was the case for us. The distance between the vans isn't huge, but the prisoner is slow as fridge, so him being in one of the further ones would have resulted in a time loss. With 7 first aid kits left, there was nothing to worry about. Joe placed the drill and rushed through the bridge in order to finish the heist. Not much to complain about regarding Heat Street as well. The plan is to rush to the crash site ASAP and then just praying for good gasoline RNG. I ended up needing 3 gasoline cans which is not the greatest but it could have been worse. The game decided 3 medic doses was not enough. So this time, it wanted me to deal with 4 of them, 3 minigun dozers and a turret at the same time. However, I was not impressed. Another turret appeared right after and I have no idea why, but I tried to bullseye off a bot. And if your question is, why didn't you destroy the turret? And the answer is very simple, I was too lazy. After moving up the hill, it was just waiting for the helicopter, and so Heat Street was done in 13 minutes. Could have been faster, but still decent overall. This heist is insanely RNG heavy, and it was one of my biggest worries for the challenge. How did it go in the end? Let's see. I had to pick one of the three doors, 
And yay, I got the right one immediately, which saved me a lot of time. Now another RNG heavy part is getting the valid samples in a reasonable amount of time. Fortunately, I can't complain about how it went for me, because I got two of them very fast. However, the game did not want me to have a joker, and I got obliterated by a cloaker out of nowhere while trying to get one. Now, it's just waiting for the elevator, which takes years for no reason, making this heist way longer, also for no reason. I was pretty surprised by how good my RNG was, and checked if I didn't have RNG modifier installed just to make sure. It was indeed sick luck. What wasn't sick however, was the elevator glitching which made me lose quite a bit of time, for no reason. Back to Joe again, this time, Panic Room. The heist is a lot about waiting and nothing special happened during drilling and getting rid of the snipers. Let's see how Joe dealt with Roof C4. It wasn't the worst, however the cloaker down right after finishing the last one bomb was pretty funny. To secure the roof, all you have to do is wait for Fade. Even if you don't kill any units, the objective will still proceed further on its own. After that, it's more waiting and then it's just ending the heist. On paper, this heist might seem pretty painful, but it wasn't the worst. So first things first, drill, then spawning the gasoline, then getting the keycard to make things slightly easier. After that, I placed the bots near the drill and basically AFK once again. It was quite swarmy, but who cares, we are playing max dodge hacker, so there weren't too many issues as long as I had my pocket ECM up. While waiting for the next objective, I decided to jump around here and there, because there was nothing else to do. And yes, I was too lazy to kill the snipers. It took a while, but the escape was finally available, so I proceeded with the usual strat. Rush and ignore the cops. The only bad RNG for undercover is the car being stuck on the roof, and as long as I don't have it, this heist can be slept through entirely. Thankfully, that's exactly what happened, and I ended up with the car falling down. I then placed the AI in decent spots and proceeded to AFK even further, until the power was taken down. The cops didn't like how I was ignoring them, and they murdered me once before I got to the third code. That's about the only thing that happened. Finally, I completed the hack and rushed through units in order to finish the heist. Nothing to say or watch here, the biggest AFK simulator in the game.
Now it's time for everyone's favourite map. My time was pretty decent and the heist was done without issues overall. But I'm an idiot and lost a significant amount of time because of one thing. The strategy is the same as always. Green and blue bags behind the caustic soda pot and the red ones are left in the middle for the cops to move closer to the spawn. Let's have a look at my pro throwing skills once again before I proceed with the first ingredient. I grabbed the first HCL bag and did the usual jump. Two out of three bags were done rather easily, but the third one ended up staying at the bottom, so I had to go back for it. However, since I let my bots carry the caustic soda bags, I decided to wait for them to leave them in order to not waste time. I rushed to get the last green bag and decided to sewer slide myself for the bots because why not. I got rid of the cops around and finished the first objective. Luckily, the second one was Caustic Soda, so I immediately got 2 out of 3 bags done. All I had to do now was going back to the spawn and to grab the last one. Now the easiest one if you want me. My throwing skills have seriously been out of this world lately, so I naturally had to waste time on Muriatic Acid, but that's not the end. I then rushed to yeet the meth bag away. However, my godlike brain somehow forgot I needed 4 bags, not 3, and so I wasted the most time because of this stupid mistake. After realising how brilliant I am, I went back and finished my job. Everyone kept fighting down there, so it was the perfect opportunity for me, and that's how Lab Rats was done. A fantastic map for time based runs like this because it's one of the fastest to complete. All I really had to do was just to rush through everything. Oh and by the way, if you're wondering why I'm running one medic bag instead of getting first aid kits, then I must say I have no idea myself. I realised it much later after completing most heists. Now our heist that requires completely different builds because regular units do not spawn here. AI can make this one slightly harder because cloakers can kick you and they spawn here more often. It didn't take long for Joe to get kicked. Other than that, there's nothing to do. You just wait for the drill to finish and rush with the money. The ranch began with a sick 1v1 with the drill, but Joe won in the end. Then it's carrying weapons for the entire heist and a smooth golf cart ride. It was a bit swarmy so that's where we lost about a tiny bit of time, but nothing special. Firestarter is a bit more time consuming, but that's because there are 3 days to do. For the first day, Joe decided to steal the weapons, which did not take too long. The second day, he stealthed. And, oh we surely missed this heist. 
The only issue this time is that it's more time consuming than every other variant so far because you have to burn the money which takes significantly more time than yoinking one bag and yeeting to escape with it. Anyway, another 3 day heist. I am on my way to becoming Heisenberg again and the floor and van RNG was the exact same. You know the drill. I don't know if what I did was the fastest way because I hardly ever play rats, but I delivered the meth and then retrieved the information. For the third day, I should have brought a sniper for the fastest clear, but this day is extremely short nonetheless, so it's whatever. Watch Dogs is only slightly RNG based. I happen to have been extremely unlucky though. I need to deliver 4 bags and since there's 4 of us, I gave 3 bags to my bots right away and carried one on my own. I then did the funny jump and just camped for the entire heist in this room because the van was there too. The exact same situation as with day 1. I gave my bags to the bots and then AFK'd until the boat arrived. Thankfully the RNG was by my side once again and the boat was right where I AFK'd. Balling Point itself is one of the very easiest heists in the entire game because enemies don't scale properly here. So it's not the longest heist, right? Well, yes, unless you are me. Watch what happened. So I'm 12 minutes into the heist which isn't too long. Things are going somewhat well. However, I never play this heist and this is where the real issue happened. The game told me to find some stupid briefcase which was probably the biggest time loss in the entire challenge. Twenty one minutes into the heist, I finally got it. Dear Lord. Joe zoomed through Murky Station without any issues. The turret RNG resulted in a down, but wasn't too much of an issue other than that. Rezzing Vlad wasn't the worst. Took two tries, and the cops weren't problematic. Finding the fireworks took a bit of time and was the only time loss in the entire heist.
small time lost happened while getting the drill. The area got pretty crowded and Joe took care of the units around first before going for it. Going for the escape ended up in a huge time loss overall. Nothing else worth showing in the heist other than that. Although look at this fucking cloaker. Very small time loss on Alaskan deal right away because of the worst saw placement. But the cops didn't break it a single time so it doesn't matter too much. Tank and generator placement was perfect on the other hand. The hose takes a bit longer to connect and Joe wasted a few seconds there, but the rest was smooth. Releasing the boat was on the faster side, except for one down at the end. Very chill RNG for the second part, no turret, no annoying cops, smooth overall. Time loss happened before the 6th minute. The cops swarmed the place with a bunch of dozers and broke the panel. The first radar was fast, the second one took a bit longer. The third radar took quite a bit of time to do as well. Joe had to go back for more C4, which was slowed down by him downing while rushing for the objective. After that, it's just waiting and nothing else.
Hello, it's me again. At the start of Birth of Sky, you want to rush forward while ignoring most cops because they do very little damage and there's no real reason to kill them even on death sentence. The first pallet only required me to light a flare, so to prevent time loss I decided to go forward and start gathering the second one before lock arrives. I was greeted by two dozers so I got rid of them. I then had to find the key card, which didn't take long at all and started getting the money bags. Lock arrived and I rushed back to finish the first one. This way I gathered half the scattered money before the objective even started, which helped me save a lot of time. The last pallet ended up in the car shop, so I used the jump trick to trigger the flare without going to the roof. Unfortunately, I got wrecked while doing so, but I got the objective, so it didn't matter. I could have used the boat, but boats are lame. We can zoom past the cops here since they don't do a lot of damage, and the heist is over. Tijuana was boring in general, so I decided to jump around until I got wrecked, and it took them quite a bit of time to take me down. The final objective was the only one that could have ended up poorly, but that's about it. Breaking Feds wasn't particularly fast, but considering it's Joe's first time in like a century, I'd say 8 minutes is good enough. Small time loss pretty much right away, the final trash container was the correct one. I was bored and wanted a hug, but the dozer said no. Can we talk about how the clear button has the priority after entering the code for a brief while? One of the funniest deaths in the entire challenge, thanks to Ament. Managed to finish the heist with over half a minute left, smooth enough. For Henry's Rock, we wanted to make sure we got the good RNG, and good RNG in this case means computer and archaeology room. Oh well, maybe next time. No IT room, but archaeology is good too. Time loss at the end, signalling bio took quite a bit of time. Another time loss at the final objective. Securing the artifacts took quite a bit of time, but altogether 14 minutes is good enough for Henry's Rock.
Shaku was very boring, nothing worth showing. The first very tiny time loss happened because of the books. Took a few tries, but was pretty fast nonetheless. The first mainframe was unlucky because it was broken right after starting it. The second one was free because it happened on fade, and the third one was the hardest which took quite a bit of time in general. The escape was decent and so the heist was done in 23 minutes. Nothing worth showing at the beginning of this heist because it's the beginning of this heist. For the RNG, we don't want weapons here. Money took about 10 minutes to carry and then it was defending the hose, which happened to have been broken a few times during the heist and resulted in time loss. Blowing up the gates also took a bit of time, but the heist was done in 20 minutes. Now it's time for Joe to become Heisenberg, and there also wasn't much to show, so I'm just showing the ending. The heist is easy by itself, but there's an annoying dude to be taken care of. He can eat like a thousand bullets and live, but sociopath with melee boost absolutely works wonders. Thanks to bots, moving the gold is very fast because you need to secure 4 bags, and since there's 4 of you, it's not an issue. Scarface was spicy in general, but first things first, the second circuit was in a garbage spot on its own, and then on the top of that, I had Dozer Swarm there, which resulted in more time loss than I hoped for. Fun fact, the golden knobs cannot be shot through, unless I'm an idiot. There's also this clip of Hacker being very balanced, by the way. Oh, and here's another one. This RNG is not the worst, but it's bad. The video was heavily edited for the most part, but if you wanted to see something intense, then look at this. So while playing, I was always watching something on my second monitor, and only later did I realise I carried way more bags than I should have. On top of that, it was another episode of Hacker being balanced. And then finally, a very risky ending.
If the mansion wasn't enough and you wanted to see more, then have fun watching Dockyard Ending. Small tip, yeet the bomb parts into the water, they will spawn near the boat if you do so. Alright, let's roll with everyone's favourite map. Peak game design. Ten ten is ten ten. Not much to show. And the exact same ending can be said about Yacht. This heist should be renamed to AFK Simulator. Here's a rare clip of Arn talking to himself and being schizo. <laughs> this attempt, this attempt, this attempt, this attempt. Oh damn it! Oh my god! <laughs> no, 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 I said uninstall payday. Payday. Hop on Arch Linux. <laughs> what? Install Arch Linux and get the, these tight uh, socks. <laughs> uh, I'm just gonna. I'll just uninstall Payday. Unironically, the most interesting clip from day two. The only real objective where a time loss could take place is here because whether you find the right door, fast or not, depends on the RNG. Let's see how that went. This day is RNG by itself. Luckily for us, the first objective was carrying the server and the other one the PC on the bottom floor. So not much to complain about here. The last one however, the archives. It doesn't take too long, but can put us a few seconds behind. And since there's no keycard, we're drilling the final door.
Top 10 Most Satisfying Anime Hacker Moments Watch my health Obviously, as everyone knows, the worst Big Bang part is the beginning. Let's see how fast we can find the correct PC. No comment. On the bright side, all of the money I need is here. Let's see how many key tries it takes. It's been so many years and I still have no idea how to do the puzzle. Diesel engine, my beloved. Pro throwing skills as usual. Day 1 done stealth because no real reason to go loud. Day 2 is all about the clues. You find them and then pick the right engine. Most of it is just waiting AFK. The first day is purposefully done incorrectly. You tag the wrong truck and then go back to the start. A very fast method. The RNG you want for this heist is not having to bag the money. Unfortunately, we were not lucky enough though. Nothing to show for framing frame. Day 1 is literally art gallery, Day 2 isn't really a heist, and Day 3 was quickly done stealth. Biker was also very boring, so all I can show you is the ending. Day 2 on the other hand was very weird. I had almost zero cops on the map. It doesn't change much because hacker is hacker, but still, I feel like there was some glitch going on.
As you would expect, Aftershock is very exciting and totally not boring to play alone. Also, this cloaker thought he's capable of cloaking a truck. This heist is filled with quite a bit of RNG, so we have to find the secret entrance by inspecting a ton of bookshelves, and finding the correct one took a bit of time. The rest of the heist was very fast though. Good RNG for the first objective, didn't waste too much time here. Van was unfortunately on the other side, so a few seconds lost here, nothing major. Everyone's beloved, Goat Simulator. The first thing I don't want is having to deal with the scaffolding goat, and if I do have to deal with it, they're not wasting too much time on it. Luck was by my side, and it did not respawn there in the first place. I also decided to gamble and hope for Captain Truck spawn because that's the best one. The one next to the fire building is alright too. Ultimately, the only one I don't want is the scaffolding truck. Can someone explain to me why Jacket is rejecting the goat? Anyway, the truck spawned where I wanted. The car didn't glitch, luckily. Day 1 wasn't terrible. So here's the thing, I hoped for the captain truck spawn on day 1 and it worked. For day 2, I hoped for the silo cage and started throwing goats accordingly. Let's see how that went. Ah, oh, fuck my life. Normally you want to jump out of the window here, but I forgot how to do it, so I took the safer route by going back. Dodge was there for me. In order to defend the button, just keep jumping and let the bots take all of the aggro. More Crasher is more Crasher, but holy shit, watch this Cloaker duo. The game thought this wasn't enough, so before the ending, there was one more. Sick driving timing, although not without difficulties. Another AFK farming simulator. I have to hope for the right safe with the insane drills. You can find a keycard to speed things up, but I forgot where it is. Pro throwing skills time, but this unironically... Almost.
The only RNG we do not want is jewellery and shopping bag with the toy. So naturally, this is what we get first. Oh well. Wine store was sick though. AFK Simulator Garbage Helicopter Spot We're not the luckiest currently The escape was good at least. Black Cat is time consuming, but there's not much to show. And the exact same thing can be said about San Martin. Now to answer the question, Yes, you can get the DSOD mask in one day while playing solo, and without speedrun strats. As a completely new player, this won't really be possible, but if you learn the heist on Death Wish first, you will be capable of doing this.